This is section 13.2, part C. Sorry, this is kind of a long section. There'll be a few videos here. Um, we're going to be looking again at the order of integration. As we've seen, it's really an important choice. And sometimes it doesn't seem as though the problem is giving us a choice. In this one, for example, they seem to indicate we have to do dy first and then dx. However, as I look at the integrand, I'm not real happy with that order of integration. In order to do dy first with that y to the fifth in the denominator, it's going to be a very difficult integral, in fact, pretty much impossible for me to do by hand. I'd have to let u be the denominator, but the derivative would be 5y to the fourth, and I don't have a y to the fourth in this problem. I'd much rather do dx first. Integrating this with respect to x, since this would be treated as a constant in the denominator, would be really easy. So I'm going to choose to reverse the order of integration myself. Now in order to do that, I really need to visualize the region, the r, that I'm working with. I can't simply reverse the order by reversing the limits of integration, because that would put a non-constant value in the outer integral, and I'm not allowed to have that. So instead, and this is key to doing these problems, you always want to draw your region before you rewrite your integral in the new order to make it easier to do. In this case, I'm going to look at my description here, which is really in my limits of integration, and say that the y limits go from y equals the square root of x to y equals 2. And in my x limits, I go from x equals 0 to x equals 4. I'm going to try and draw what that describes. Let's see, y equals the square root of x. Looks like that. and y equals 2 something like that x equals 0 of course is just the y-axis and x equals 4 I'm suspicious is probably this intersection point we can verify that if x is 4 the square root of 4 is indeed 2 so these would match up perfectly if that's an x value of 4. So here is my region that I'm working with. Double check. Bottom is square root of x curve. Top is y equals 2. That works. And left to right is 0 to 4. All right, I'm now going to think about what I want this to look like. I really want to have dx first, and then dy. And I know that means in order to do dx first, x goes from left to right. I'm going to have to think about this in terms of horizontal rectangles. As soon as I'm looking at horizontal rectangles, I know I need the x equals form of my equation. So this is going to become x equals y squared. All right, my x values, the left side of my rectangle is on x equals 0. And the right side is on the curve, which is now x equals y squared. And the y values, I can just read them off the graph this time, just go from 0 to 2. So that wasn't too bad. So you notice that when I've rewritten, it's definitely not, again, just a swap of the limits of integration. I really had to think through my region to get that. All right, let's do this one by hand. I think this one might be interesting to do all the way by hand because it was uh, so difficult to do in the original problem. We'll see it's not too bad when we do our new order of integration. As I think about this this time, I'm integrating dx first. So if I want to, that y plus or y to the fifth plus one that's in the bottom 
that's really a constant. I could pull that out of the first integral. Just leaving x dx, which is now a really easy integral to do. Integrating that, of course, is going to give me 1 half x squared. I'm going to choose to pull the 1 half out front and just leave the x squared in here from x equals 0 to x equals y squared. And so I have 1 half, integral from 0 to 2 of 1 over y to the fifth plus 1 times, plugging a y squared in there, y squared squared is going to be y to the fourth. And I can see that when I plug in x equals zero, it'll just give me zero, so I won't bother writing that part out. All right, in general, I've always said we can use the calculator from here, and in general you can, but it doesn't hurt once in a great while to review the whole process by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to do that this time. Notice that at this point, if I did need to finish by hand, it's actually not that hard. If I now let the denominator be my u, the derivative, 5y to the 4th, is just fine. I've got the y to the 4th right there. So let's just finish this one up. u is that denominator. du dy would be 5y to the 4th. So let's see, du... I'm going to put the 1 -fifth over here, and I'll put the y to the 4th dy on the right. And so going back to my problem, I would have a 1 over u, and this y to the 4th dy can be replaced by the 1 -fifth du. So I end up with a 1 tenth integral of 1 over u du is the natural log of u. And I'm going to go ahead and say u is actually y to the fifth plus 1. And my original limits of integration were from 0 to 2. So I've got 1 tenth. times the natural log of 2 to the fifth plus 1 minus 1 tenth times the natural log of 0 plus 1. That would be 1 tenth times the natural log of 33. Oops, not 333, just 33. And then the natural log of 1 is 0, so that whole second term is going to become 0. And I actually have an exact answer here. Again, I won't generally do them all the way by hand, but didn't think it was bad to review that process once in a while. All right, let's do one more problem like this. In example eight, once again, I've got a situation where they've already suggested an order of integration, but I need to see if I'm comfortable with that. Looking at this problem, I can see that I'll need to let u be x squared plus y squared, what's under the radical. And if I was first integrating a dx, the x derivative here would be 2x. And I don't have an x out here. I have a y. So I would much rather do the dy first, because the y derivative here is 2y. And that's going to match up well with the y that I have sitting there. So once again, let's choose to change our limits of integration. I'll come back to this u substitution later. I'm actually going to take a little time out here to draw. This was listed as x first. So my x limits of integration tell me I'm going from x equals 1 to x equals e to the y. And my y limits tell me I'm going from y equals 0 
to y equals 1. All right, let's see. x equals 1, of course, is just a vertical line. And x equals e to the y is the same as y equals ln x. I know how to draw that. That actually has a y, uh, x intercept rather of 1. And then it kind of goes down vertical asymptote on the x axis. And then it kind of comes up slowly. I'm sorry, vertical asymptote on the y axis. I said that backwards. y goes from y equals 0, which is already this intersection point, to y equals 1. And I can see my region right in here. This was x equals e to the y. Let's double check. On the x, I'm going from x equals 1 to x equals e to the y. So left to right, that looks correct. And then the y values from 0 to 1 also look correct. Now in order to do this problem, I know I want to switch the order of integration. So I'd like to do dy first and then dx, meaning I'm going to have to change this and start thinking of it in terms of a vertical rectangle instead. That means instead of x equals e to the y, I'm going to have to use the y equals ln x. And when I think of my vertical rectangle, the bottom of the rectangle, the lower limit of integration, is right there at that ln x. The upper limit is at y equals 1. As far as the x limits, x equals 1 here is going to provide the left side. So I've got that right now. But I'll need this intersection point to figure out the right side. I can set my two equations equal to one another ln x equals 1. And just by exponentiating both sides, that tells me x equals e. So my upper li limit of integration is just e. All right, let's go ahead and do our integration. Um, I'm going to come back, and I already knew what I was going to let u equal to, but let me kind of do it down here. We said u is going to be x squared plus y squared. And I'm now doing dy first. So I'll do the partial derivative of u with respect to y. Uh, that's constant, so derivative of 0. And the derivative of y squared is 2y. So du, if I bring the 2 over, it would actually become a 1 half du is y dy. And again, don't stress about the partial derivative notation versus the regular differential notation. We're using them interchangeably at this point. They're just both differentials. So rewriting my integral. I'm going to take this y dy and I'll be replacing it with this 1 half du. So I'll have the square root of u inside my radical, and then a 1 half that I'll put out here, du inside my integral, with the dx out here waiting its turn. For the moment, I'm not writing limits of integration. Again, those are y values, and at the moment I don't have y's, I have u's. All right, the integral of square root u, or u to the 1 half, is u to the 3 halves, divided by 3 halves, or times 2 thirds, which I'll put out in front. 
And so I actually have one third times the integral from one to e. And now I'm gonna put back my u. u was x squared plus y squared. That gets raised to the 3 halves. And I have to go back a ways here, but my original limits of integration for y went from ln x to 1. So from y equals ln x to y equals 1. All right, plugging in, I'd have x squared plus 1 squared is just 1 to the 3 halves. Subtract x squared plus ln x squared to the 3 halves. And all of that now has to be integrated dx. This is a good example of one that I don't want to do by hand. In fact, probably can't. And so this, I'm just going to put that whole thing in my calculator, including the multiplier of one-third. I'm going to double check. I did that moment to make sure I got the one-third in there. I don't think I did. Uh, let's see. Yes. So when I do include the multiplier of one-third and do that whole integral on my calculator, I get about 0.892. Did not come out to a nice fraction, unsurprisingly. So I'll just leave the approximation on this one. All right, we'll continue in the next video.